everyone. Be welcomed to the second episode of my podcast, Cycling to Athens. Why not? My name is Bernie Schuster and I would like to continue to talk about my road cycling adventure from Austria to Greece, from Vienna to Athens that most likely changed my life. Today, day two, we are starting in Graz and we are going to Zagreb. Have you ever experienced crossing borders with the bike, I wonder? Doesn't matter with a road bike or with a mountain bike. Have you? How did it feel? Think about it. For me, this is super exciting. Managing with your own bike, with your own body, to leave your country and enter another country, which you usually do with a car or with a plane, is super exciting. Especially when you pass the border itself with a sign that says Slovenia or Zagreb. Zagreb's not a country, it's a city, but it's anyway exciting. Anyway, this is something we want to talk about today, beside other super interesting and hopeful entertaining stuff. We start with the two data, facts and figures, basically my performance of this very day, starting in Graz and ending up in the wonderful city of Zagreb. As usual, I will offer a tour journal. So basically my personal story about this very day, what happened during the ride, any obstacles, any challenges, any nice acquaintances, any adventures that happened on the way. And lastly, as a main topic of today, I would like to share with you how did I come up with this adventure and how did I plan it. So really give you my personal process description from the idea to a strategy and in the end to the actual plan. So if you have an idea already to go somewhere, to do something, this is the perfect starting point. Protect this idea, work on the idea, and maybe I can help with my thoughts that you can unleash your potential and make an adventure happen for you. I hope this is exciting. So good to have you here. Let's go straight into the duotator of day two. It was a wonderful Thursday. It was the 2nd of September and the day is called Ultimate Freedom Crossing Borders. I started in Graz in a wonderful Styria and ended up in Zagreb. Ahead of me were a total distance to cover of 194 kilometers and I needed to climb a total ascent of 1475 meters, so not too bad. In the end I had an average speed of 24.1 kilometers per hour and I had a gorgeous 8 hours and 2 minutes on the bike and my body needed to produce 4408 kilocalories to manage this very trip. As usual, all this data have been recorded with my Garmin Forerunner 235 and the data then pulled out of the Garmin Connect app. As I already mentioned, just to be very sure, I just used Garmin because I had it. There is no sponsorship or anything else involved in that. What happened on this very day? The plan was, ladies and gentlemen, Graz crossing the wonderful state of Slovenia and here through Maribor, and then heading towards Zagreb. I'm just looking here at the map. Folks, it's basically again from north to south, almost a straight line as the, as the bird fly, as the crow fly. Um, you could say a slight drift towards east, but pretty much straightforward. I started with slight knee pain, but not something too Severe. I reacted instantly, ladies and gentlemen, got off the bike, did a proper stretching and massaging session. No injuries for the long run, it's not a sprint. So this is already a tip for all of the adventurers under the listeners. If you have pain, if something is happening to your body, react immediately. Very often you cannot cycle it off. <laughs> so in my case, a lot of stretching. And it was, I think, because the quadriceps was too tight after the 211 kilometers, which would make sense. Um, and I could really relax 
the tension and get my knee um, free of pain. I met a fellow cyclist who was retired and totally into e-biking. So he was joining uh, me on a part of the first two hours or three hours of the day. He told me that usually he's doing a average of 14,000 kilometers a year. So which is quite impressive. A funny story on a rest in Leibniz, wonderful little city of Leibniz. I had a funny conversation with a fellow Austrian who was enjoying his beer whilst I was eating my sandwich and the coffee. So interesting, I had sandwich and coffee in the morning, he had a beer. Again, he asked, hey, where are you heading for? And this time I answered, Zagreb. He looked startled and confused and gave me a surprise. Are you kidding? No, I'm not, I thought, but I'm not sure if he, if he really believed me. Um, but then he focused again on his beer and it was good. Crossing Slovenia uh, through the Südsteirische Weinstraße, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful area for hikers, cyclists and wine lovers, wine yards and green and wonderful smooth mountains, hills, really, really nice. I cycled through the lovely city of Maribor, where people helped me since I had a bit of navigational questions at a point, a uh, very, very happy very nice um, then I had a funny story this was then already the left Austria borders crossing then entered Slovenia border crossing then left Slovenia border crossing and was about to enter Croatia and I call this now backdoor entrance so what happened I followed the, the navigation my route and I entered, I think, Croatia somewhere next to a cycling pass underneath the gate like a barrier, which was definitely not the official um, way to do so. But what do you want to do? I was just following the route. Suddenly there was a dead end. On my right, there was this barrier. And I thought, ah, it's going to be all right. So I <laughs> basically flipped the bike over, um, pushed and pulled it carefully through. I ducked underneath the barrier. And there I was in Croatia. Um, yeah, no one checked my passport. No one wanted to say anything because there was no one. Anywho, relieved after arriving in Zagreb, Croatia. Um, again, a nice bed and breakfast place, friendly people. Interestingly, it was before arriving at the hotel, I passed past the stadium of Maximir. This is where Dinamo Zagreb is playing, for example. Um, made some pictures. It was very nice and unexpected. Dinner in the evening was well deserved. Great, great food in in Zagreb. I had two main dishes for for dinner. Where the waitress was fascinated with my hunger, <laughs> so all well and good. All right, what's the main topic of the day? A very, very good one. I want to talk about the how. How did I come up? exactly with this adventure why cycling to Athens and here is Bernie's story from the initial thought to the final trip to Athens so the initial thought was actually a complete different one a dream I had was to just follow the wonderful the beautiful Blue River Danube until its end until the Black Sea and I wanted to do this in the summer of 21 so not in the summer of 69 like Bruce Springsteen. Hey, for those music fans out there, Bruce Springsteen, summer of 69 or tougher than the rest. Good, good tunes. And so what to do? I looked at the map, checked out roughly on Google Maps or Komoot, very simple, 2,400 kilometers. So I knew, well, that's possible. Cool. Doing this research on the map, just roughly, I realized two or three drawbacks. Drawback number one was that the final destination, so basically where the, the river Danube merges into the Black Sea, there was basically nothing. So there is no big city or no special place. Secondly, coming back home. Long trips need long time, means a lot of vacation. Coming back means as well vacation days, and I wanted to keep them as tight and short as possible and thirdly a social dilemma a good friend of mine celebrated his 40th birthday 
in a super well way, he invited us for a week of sailing in Croatia, which obviously is a wonderful idea, and I didn't want to miss it. So I had this dilemma then with either cycling to the Black Sea or going to my friend's sailing trip. So what to do? I was checking out vacation. Maybe it's possible, I thought. But then I quickly realized that I have in total 30 days of vacation, which is brilliant. Most people in Europe, I guess, have between 22, 23, 25 and 30. And I knew that with one week of sailing and then three weeks of cycling, four weeks vacation, I'll, I definitely don't get it. I knew three weeks is kind of the borderline um, question you can <laughs> challenge your boss with in my case. So I didn't have budget for both trips. So what to do? Hmm. There was a plan B needed. And what would have been the plan B if the Black Sea is not possible? I needed to include the Croatia trip somewhere. So I did a quick Google Maps check and a quick Komoot check, which both are super useful for this kind of uh, exercise. I checked the distance from my home place in Austria, where basically all my friends would have started for the sailing trip, to Croatia, Primorstom. This was the, the harbor where we started with the sailing trip, was roughly 780 kilometers, so a rough check. Okay, I said, I'll definitely cycle to Croatia, 780 kilometers, that's done. But I wanted to do a bit more. So I thought, hmm, I cannot stop after the cycling trip to Croatia. I need to go further. And then I was looking around on the map, basically, where to go. And I had three options in my mind. Option one was, I'll take the ferry from Primorsten to Ancona in Italy. So literally just going towards west and then cycling to Andorra, roughly 1,600 kilometers. Why Andorra? My sister has been living there. And I said, just visit your sister. First Croatia, then visiting your sister in Andorra. Second option was, I thought on the way to Andorra, the wonderful city of Marseille. So I was thinking when it comes to vacation days, maybe it's too far, maybe just Marseille, along the Côte d'Azur. So here again, taking the ferry to Ancona, and then crossing Italy along the Côte d'Azur, along the coastline, bam, Marseille, having a good time there flying home. But then I was looking as well on the map further south, so from Croatia down, and suddenly there was this wonderful city called Athens in Greece. And I looked it up, and it's only 1,300 kilometers roughly away from Primorsen. Hmm, I thought... That's interesting. And in the end, making my choices based on the fact that when I cycled to Barcelona, which I told you earlier, I was actually cycling along the Côte d'Azur. So I thought, Bernie, come on, option one and two, you have done this kind of already, go to Athens. So surprise, surprise, the plan B was Bernie cycling to Athens. And that's it. The city itself was just such an inspiring final destination. If you think about the cultural impact on sport from Athens, the first Olympic Games, it's so rich, marathon running, everything was just screaming, Bernie, please cycle to Athens. And this is what I decided. But hold on a moment. How to know that this trip is actually possible? Because roughly 1,300 kilometers plus 800,000 kilometers, it needed a bit more detailed checking. And this is what I can as well recommend to you. First, have a dream. Secondly, don't get frustrated if personal weddings, personal events come into the way. And thirdly, there's always a way around. Find another destination, be, be resilient, and then take the time to really check exactly if it's possible. Here was checkpoint number one, the fitness check. Can you do this? 
and hear a checklist I've been using and maybe it's useful to you. Fitness checklist point number one. How many kilometers could I cover roughly per day? In your case, how many kilometers can you cover roughly per day? How many consecutive cycling days you want to do? How many consecutive cycling days are you capable of? How many days of vacation days you got? Do you need a buffer day? Do you want a buffer day like a day off like I did with the sailing? How much training and preparation do you want to put into this? And how is your current fitness status? So what can you do at this very moment? And then how much time you got until the journey starts. Let me tell you about my case. I knew that I'm definitely fine with cycling 130 to 150 kilometers per day. And I knew doing this over consecutive 10 to 15 days would have been absolutely okay. So just based on my previous cycling experiences, but as well based on the trips I have already been doing, so not only long-term cycling, but as well shorter cycling trips, I had this confidence. So think about your last year, last two years, and this helps you to get a feeling. Here the math. I had in total three weeks and three days of vacation. This is what I could uh, negotiate with my boss. So this is the total number, 24 days. I needed to distract six days because of my sailing. So it brings me down to 18 days. And this is what I got. And a rough check here, 800 kilometers plus 1,500 kilometers, a bit of buffer within this calculation, brought me to roughly a total of 2,300 kilometers. And this roughly now divided by 14 because you need uh, some days to come back and you need some buffer days, as I mentioned before. This brought me to 160 kilometers a day, which roughly means seven hours on the bike if you calculate 25 kilometers per hour. And with that calculation, I roughly knew hmm, this trip is possible. So maybe this approach helps you as well in your trip planning. So in my case, I had two parts. Part number one, I called the tour of pain. Why the tour of pain? Very simple. I planned four days to go to Primerschen, which is roughly 760 to 780 kilometers, which means if you cycle four days, 190 kilometers roughly per day, not really looking at the altitude I needed to climb and not really considering too much the weight of my equipment I need to carry. So that's why the Tour of Pain. I knew it's a challenge, but on the hindsight, after four days of cycling, I had six days of wonderful ocean, food, drinks, relaxation. So this was motivating me. And after that, part number two, I called it the unknown because I had no idea how the road conditions are and what's happening from Primerschen from Croatia to Athens. I knew it's roughly 1,500 kilometers and I knew that I need to cross many countries. I started in Croatia, then I knew I need to pass Bosnia and Herzegovina, then I need to pass Montenegro, then I need to pass Albania, and then I end up in Greece, and finally in Athens. So, a lot of unknown. But what I knew, I have 13 days for 1,500 kilometers. This means 115 kilometers per day. And with the flight having been already booked, I knew that I have enough time to bring this home because there's a lot of buffer. 115 is quite all right. Yeah, now comes the most important one that you need to make it real. And what means to make it real? You need to put money down and make decisions. That means I booked a flight from Athens with a bike to Vienna 
on the Thursday, the 23rd of September. That means it was done. <laughs> Made me really smile. So summarized in my case, 17 days for 2,300 kilometers, roughly 135 kilometers a day. Check. Easy money. Six hours on the bike. That works. These numbers should help you to get as well a gut feeling. I did purposefully on the first four days, remember the tour of pain, I wanted to have a sportive challenge, so I said 190 kilometers a day, that's okay, I want to really get to the limits there. And then afterwards, for the unknown, I had roughly 1500 kilometers with 13 days, which means a real, a real buffer trip, but this is needed. Another point after the more fact-based planning was a bit of a fitness check and a feasible and realistic adventure check. I feel, and this is an advice to you, you, you need to be capable of cycling 200 kilometers with an ascent of 2,000 meters on a single day, rather okay. So this is, this is a, a, a rule of thumb from my side with an average pace of 25 kilometers per hour. If you can do this, 2,000 meters climbing, 200 kilometers distance with 25 kilometers per hour, rather okay, that means you have a good fitness level. Be very much aware of climbing for those who are in flatter areas of our world. 2,000 meters plus the additional weight of your equipment, the additional stress because of consecutive days is something you need to not underestimate and need to consider. What did I do? And this is what I can recommend as well. I did a so-called Bernie's stress test. I was planning a hiking vacation with my friends in Zauchensee. It's a wonderful area in Salzburg, super beautiful amidst the mountain ranges and really a very yeah, known place for skiing. The family Walchhofer lives there. Walchhofer Michael, a former downhill racer, World Cup skier, a real great guy, and we actually met him there for hiking. And instead of going there by car, I decided to cycle there because I thought it's a good preparation for the trip. It has been 230 kilometers and in total 3,000 meters of ascent of climbing. And I did it in one day, in one run. And even though I had a problem with my wheel, so I had a flat tire, actually two flat tires, I was really arriving in a state where I was definitely super exhausted, but I was feeling all right. I was feeling all right. And having done such a trip really gave me a lot of confidence that I was capable to do the trip to Athens because I knew if something comes into my way, I can really cover a lot of distance on one day, I have a buffer. And this made me feel very comfortable. So beside the fitness check, I needed to make another decision. What is the travel type I want to choose? Do I want to bring my tent, a sleeping bag to be completely autonomous? Or do I want to be a bit quicker and faster and comfortable and take hotels, bed and breakfast places? I decided to go for the second one. I didn't want to go with a backpack nor with any other bag so light is fast. And this is what I wanted to do. Therefore, I said bed and breakfast and hotels. This is my way of traveling. It depends on the budget you have in mind. I aimed for the part two. Remember the unknown, roughly 150 kilometers per day to be conservative and safe, but at the same time to have a couple of free days in Athens because it's nice to be in Athens and spend some days relaxing, maybe, yeah, maybe getting a nice hotel and enjoying a couple of relaxing days. I used booking.com for doing all my reservations and it felt actually very easy and very straightforward. Again, 
Booking.com did not sponsor me. I was just using it. And I thought the main benefit was that I could find really a talk, a lot of hotels and places, which allows you to react in a flexible way to your personal conditions and to the progress of the journey. And for a navigation, I kept my phone and I used Komoot as an app. Here again, Komoot, I think is the German pronunciation. I've been just using it in the past. It works very well for me. And this is what I did. I will talk in the next podcast very precisely about all the equipment and in another podcast very precisely about navigation. This have been a couple of thoughts for the planning. The unlock tip though, how to decide to go for it, is the most important one. And at one point, you need to make the decision, you need to have the courage to say, yes, I'm doing it. So you need to make very consciously the decision from planning to, yes, this is not just an idea, this is not just a plan, I am doing it. Write down, if you want, a year, a month, a precise date. Keep it for yourself, but make it very tangible and very concrete. With keeping for yourself, I mean, don't share it immediately with everyone. Not everyone, even your close friends sometimes, are not so supportive as you might think they are. When you talk to your best friends, Give them explanation of your motivation. Give them explanation of your thought process so they understand how important this is to you and how they can support you. If they say, hey, it's dangerous, then they are right. But the point would be, how can you reduce the danger? For example, navigation, checking in on a daily base or even on a half daily base, wearing reflective things having proper lights, etc., etc. So instead of being afraid of something, let's use brains to reduce the fear. And the last thing kind of I want to talk about is preparation. It is so important to really prepare for this trip. What I mean with preparation is very simple. You need to train for a proper training. You need a training's plan. And you need to really follow this plan. You need to work hard every day, every week, every month in preparation. You need to prepare your bike. You need to buy equipment. You need to understand how to repair your bike, how to fix things on the bike, on the run. This is super important for such a long journey. It is not about mental strength only. It's about hard training and preparation. All right, my dear cycling friends, time is flying and slowly... This episode is coming to an end. I hope with the insights, the thought process, the personal sharing and especially the concrete tips in terms of trip planning, the kilometer per day planning means hours on the bike planning, the preparation tips, the fitness check tips, the tips about where to go and how to combine and merge it with your social life was very helpful if you have any questions if you have comments or feedback i would really appreciate an email via cyclingathens at gmail.com this is just one word and now here's the quick outlook to our next session this is episode three means day three on this very day we are not leaving a country this time so we are staying in the wonderful croatia And we are going to cycle from Zagreb to the wonderful city of Korinica. Beside this, we are talking about the most important topic, which is safety. Why is it so important? I want to encourage you to do adventures and to realize your dreams. But I want you to do it safely. No injuries. This is something I always used to say to my football club in the training. No injuries, ladies and gentlemen. So what happened? As a quick outlook, I picked the road and suddenly found myself on a main commuting road which were mainly used by trucks. And I want to give you an experience and the exit strategy 
if you get lost in a very dangerous traffic situation. And this is what we're going to talk about. So please tune in. I'm looking forward to have you again on the podcast. This is Cycling Athens, why not? My name is still Bernie Schuster and I would like to thank you with a quote of the day that might help you to get inspired for your own next adventure, which says, without self-discipline, success is impossible, period. Period.